Like I find myself just going there for that like peace of mind and validation because what I just said about changing targets based on your gut, optimizer is that stopgap between my gut and reality. Hello and welcome to another Optimizer Expert interview. Today's guest has well over a decade of experience in paid media, now runs her own solo printer business focusing on paid media coaching. She's here to talk to us today about her top four tools that she uses to run her business. Please welcome Sarah Stamen. Uh, so let's dive into your tech stacks. So there are four tools that you primarily use to run your business. And the first of these is HoneyBook. So what HoneyBook is, is it's a workflow. And it has my scheduler, it has my invoicing, it has my CRM, it actually has my payment processing. So it has absolutely everything I need. And whatever price it was, it was very affordable starting out. So that's the first thing that I use. Um, so a lot of times the requests that I get other than running my business, right? So with running my business, it's a discovery call through with the discovery call, I take out a form uh, and then I get time on my calendar. So it goes through this entire flow for me, reminds them that they have the appointment. We have that conversation and then I then put in the contract and the proposal and it goes all the way through the process for me. So I would say that's one of the tools that is working very hard for me. Um, so starting out with that discovery form, I have every answer they've given on there. It tracks the emails. I can even track my time in it. Um, and then it's helped me overcome that ability to show up professionally. Now, that being said, I know that it's used a lot more with like social media managers and you can even tell there's like wedding planners and things like that. So it's not perfect for the paid search uh, service offering, but it fits the bill for me at this time. That CRM component is really important because a lot of people think CRMs, you only need those if you're like a big business and you've got uh, dozens and hundreds of customers that you need to look after, but you want to deliver the best possible service, right? Make sure that you're on top of stuff. How would you recommend somebody who's never used a CRM for an independent business or a solopreneur business? If you're just starting out on your own, certainly researching on YouTube, watching how other people use the tool is really, really important. And then from there, comparing the tools, but you don't know what you need until you actually start doing it. So I would read that and be like, what's the price? Can, what's the cancellation? So like a lot of tools will force you to pay for a year and then you're stuck with it and you have to run your business on that for a year. So just looking at those types of things uh, are really, really important at the beginning. And it was funny because when I first got it, like I said, I got it from a YouTube, uh, a freelancer that talked about it. I started using it and I was like, uh, you know, it's not getting much use, but then I started getting clients and I'm like, this is working for me. This is really working for me. And then I would say sort of secondarily is like going into the tool and using the features it has and paying attention to their release cycle and what they're actually putting out there. I think that's also really important because it's so you, I've seen people who they have the tool, but then they use like a calendar. They don't realize that HoneyBook has that built in there. So if anyone who set up a meeting is now in my CRM. Um, anyone who sets up a 15 minute networking now in my CRM, any person who has contact with my business is in my CRM because I get them through that link. I really like what you mentioned about um, looking for something that doesn't lock you in for a long period because cash flow is so important for, for any service business, but especially when you're just uh, a single person running the whole thing. Okay, next tool on your tech stack. This is a personal favorite of mine and we actually use this to run all the marketing ops at Optimizer, Notion. You have this vision of your business before you start actually running your business. And it was just always talked about on freelancers. And then there's this thing called like the Notion Girly, and it's people make these whole videos of building out these templates that are really cute. So what first attracted it, me to it is just the beauty of it. The fact that you can put memes and pictures and cute banners. So it was completely superficial, but what I actually like is you can have a database behind it. 
which a database like an Excel sheet or something that essentially populates your to-do list and you can Kanban out your to-do list, look at your week. You can manipulate the same data over and over again. I mean, it's kind of a lot like the beauty of Optimizer, right? But it's just the ability to visualize in different ways. And then also I would say that feature of being able to beautify it so it looks good for me because coming from pen and paper and stickers and doodles and just like, it's just nice to be able to make it a place that you wanna go for your to-do list versus something that you just have to use. That's why I personally like it uh, and how it works for me. And technology, particularly digital products, they, they have this, by default, they're cold. Like it's just, it's just code and pixels on a screen. So I actually think there's a lot of value to, like you said, beautifying your to-do list or whatever space you operate in and just making sure that you feel comfortable in it. Um, one thing we do on our team is everybody, in addition to our database populating all the stuff that we're working on as a team, everybody has their own view. And, you know, I prefer the Kanban board. Other people prefer just a simple list of stuff. Other people like a list, but they like it sorted a certain way. So everybody kind of gets the experience that they want out of it. So I'm taking the unignorable course right now on just building audience building, and they're actually running a course through it. So you always have access. There's just so many powerful ways to use the platform. And so it's something that can grow with you or shrink with you. The one part we didn't say is like, it's free, at least the version that I'm on, I'm on the free version. But if I wanted at some point to grow an agency team, I can transition, but that goes with the grow with me into a paid version and have a team and, and they can look at it how they want to look at it. Solopreneurs love a good free tool, especially one that scales with success. Getting into the paid media side. So the first paid media software on your list is Shape. Uh, and Shape is a fantastic tool, uh, really good with specializing in budgets. So talk to us about how you use Shape. It's really simple that I just open it up and I glance at that graph and it really just has a graph with a right beside it, you know, a line of where you are and where it might spread or cross. And so it is for me that quick glance that I can go to to see what's going on with my account and the spend. Because if there's one thing that gives me anxiety, especially being a solopreneur, is what's going to happen with my spend throughout the month if I'm not in there all day, every day. One of the differences is when you come from a massively huge agency, your client load actually isn't that, that high. Um, and so the number of clients you're managing every single day, all day, you could be in the platform on that one enterprise level. And when I say enterprise, I mean household name brand. So the, the challenges of, of spend aren't as prevalent as when maybe you're looking at it two times a week. That, that can get out of line. So that's why I like it. Um, it also makes it really clear um, up there, like, here's your spend and here's what the ideal spend is. So it's really clear about how to change it. And then it doesn't really give you that much more fluff. Eyes on your budget are critical because we all know ad platforms like to, they, for the most part, they do respect budgets, but they tend to overspend or not spend enough. And neither of those are ideal situations. So it's really good to have a tool like that. I had somebody fairly junior say, you can just turn up the budget really, really high in a campaign and get it to spend and it like outrageously high. <laughs> and she was correct that that can sometimes happen, but then it can just go from zero to bananas. I think the opposite when you're working on it every day, sometimes you can be too either aggressive or conservative with a ROAS target, because don't forget, you know, on a lot, I do a lot of e -com, you have your budget, but then you have your targets. And that is where sometimes things can get out of whack because you're changing those targets based sometimes on your gut, frankly, and you can be just too aggressive and too conservative. That's where, where that doesn't necessarily spin or overspins. Fourth on your list, Optimizer. And I love talking to our customers and finding out like, what are the cool ways that they're applying our software to their unique circumstances. So how, how does Optimize, how do we fit into your workflow? I'd love As somebody who's been doing PPC forever, there is a bit of sort of a, 
I don't need that tool. I can use my brain. And I would say for me, that was the side that I erred on for a long time until I went independent and until I started working in this this framework um, of automation. I think that's really, really where Optimizer for me tends to shine the most, um, as well as having that peace of mind that the decision that I'm making quickly is the appropriate decision. So I actually, what's funny is I literally, my favorite client, it's because I have Optimizer <laughs> and it says our saved. And I'm like, it really does. Like I find myself just going there for that like, peace of mind and validation because what I just said about changing targets based on your gut, Optimizer is that stopgap between my gut and reality because it has that data. Um, so that's why I enjoy it. So the types of things that I love, love, I'm obsessed with the decision that I think it's like a decision framework, but you basically could go in and look at month over month, why certain metrics changed. Now, if I were doing that in the interface, I would, you know, have my interface with the, you know, campaigns and I would side by side, but this puts it up and down in this special chart. And so you really get to see the whole picture versus the side by side picture. And it sort of ties into exactly what we were saying about Notion, that my brain can think about it differently, looking at it vertically versus horizontally, and then maybe catch something that I wouldn't necessarily have caught um, before. So I absolutely love that. And it speeds up my monthly reporting. I mean, it's made my monthly reporting from like probably a couple hours of analysis to come up with some great bullet points about why everything changed to like, sometimes 20 to 30 minutes because it tells me exactly the factors. And then I always, always, always have learned with clients, you know, it's revenue changed because revenue changed based on this, you know, every single thing. I don't just make a statement. I always say exactly why that happened and then get them to see that full picture. And so that helps me. So I would say that is probably the my favorite, if I if you maybe choose a favorite, but I've played with everything. I played with the workouts, which keep you accountable, which I know they're like technically depreciated, but I still go there. So please don't depreciate them or teach me something else. Um, I go to the keyword lasso. Um, love that. Um, I actually have even used the budget um, as well when I feel like shape isn't directionally as explicit as I need it to be. I mean, there's probably not a button that I haven't pressed on there. Um, the dashboards, which I think those are new, the reporting, the executive reporting, love them, love, love those. Sometimes I'll even use those in addition to another reporting tool to validate. There's a lot, a lot to it. Uh, and I guess that's sort of another takeaway is it's okay to have multiple tools. You can literally go into Optimizer and get lost finding different things uh, in that you can potentially apply to your account. Yeah, we fully endorse um, not putting all your eggs in one basket. And obviously I'm biased. I do think Optimizer should be a staple in every paid media toolkit. Um, but that doesn't mean that Optimizer is all you need. Um, just like you wouldn't advertise only on one platform as a business, you want to make sure that you know your tech stack as a service provider is also diversified. What are some of the challenges that you face as a business of one? Being a business of one, you're always worried about like looking too small and not be ta being taken seriously. Um, so I think that's always something in the back of my mind I worry about, but I've noticed that one, in building the community that I have, that's not a problem that my clients necessarily see, uh, but it is something that it's just sort of that imposter syndrome living in my head. I would also say when it comes to just a challenge as a solopreneur, it's like making sure that those relationships you have are really, really solid. So you can meet somebody you know, through your content. I think that's that's how I meet the majority of my my partners through, you know, LinkedIn fields, but then really making sure that that work is solid. 
uh, so that you can build something comprehensive for clients. Well, that's a wrap. If you would like to check out any of these tools or start a free trial of Optimizer, check the links in the description below. If you're a solopreneur, just give us a shout. One of our team would be more than happy to walk you through uh, which parts of Optimizer would be best for you to focus on for your business. Make sure you follow Sarah. Links in the description. Take care, everybody. Bye.